Okay. Genelec, 8341s. Um, if you don't know who a Genelec is, it's a Genelec. Genelec. And um, these are A, the most expensive speakers I've ever reviewed, and certainly by far the most uh, properly professional speakers. So here's the deal. I don't think I'm qualified to talk about them in any sort of meaningful way. If you're coming here and you have a professional background in the music mastering and mixing, and you're looking for a review that is gonna explain why you should buy these speakers over other competent brands, Cali Audio, I'm not gonna be that guy. I'm sort of like scared to think about these speakers a little bit. Because here's the deal. Um, that one uh, costs almost $3,000, and then that one, Costs almost three thousand dollars, and then that costs five hundred, and I had to buy this for one hundred and twenty, and then the wires were another forty, and um, shit. Okay, so let's look at some specs first of the eighty three forty ones. They weigh twenty two pounds each. Um, the woofers, plural, because this is a three way on each side. Um, the woofers, plural, have two hundred and fifty watts to run them. The mid-range, which is this inner part of the cone, there, that that's the mid-range, just like a calf would have a coaxial. That's that gets 150 watts, and the tweeter in there, that little baby thing, a three-quarter inch tweeter, uh, that gets 150 watts. So that's much power. And we're gonna pull this off here when I'm done talking about it, and I'm gonna set them up in the living room near the end of this because that's where I like them best. But uh, this. This isn't plastic, it's not wood. This is cast aluminum. And, uh, fuck. Okay. I'm gonna find my Zen now. 110 decibels, 22 pounds. The driver size, what size driver is it, Zeos? And I'll have to show you. Do you see there's a, a fascia of aluminum, right? This is a giant aluminum, like, wave guide for the mid-range and tweeter. Well, behind it, there, is a six and five eighths by three and a half inch, like that shaped woofer up there and at the bottom. And I don't know how you make this work with the configuration where two of the drivers are little hidden, literally hidden behind a block of aluminum, but they are and they project the air up and down. There's a huge port in the back, which we'll look at when we get them off the stands. Okay, the person who sent me these is a patron, and he's like, look, I was looking for my end game. I just, I like really analytical speakers, and I just said, fuck it, this is it, it's time to end it. And I'm pretty sure he's gonna be very, very happy with the results of his uh, uh, Fuck It Friday. Uh, I brought up the manual because in case I need to reference something, like one of those diagrams, or about the, the rotary controls and the dip switches and the layouts, and, and oh God. I'm gonna get, I feel nauseous, actually. I don't feel n nervous, like, doing reviews, but I feel like a lot of people who are in the professional music industry are going to, like, find this review, and they're gonna be like, who's this asshole with a camera on his head talking about the shit that he shouldn't be? And I apologize to you guys. But, um, Seals likes to play music. I really, I'm here to enjoy music, and all that shit, and all of that shit is all to enjoy music. Flavors of it, different different moods, different seasons. Hmm, it's feeling very classy in here. Bucard S 300s. Oh, I really want to show off. Bucard S 400s. Ooh, I really want to get analytical like you do with these Genelex fluids. You know, uh, at some point I might pull the big Yamos down just because fucking big Yamos. But um, these have a very specific sound. Pure. Like the virgin white snow of Canada. It's just... I now have to judge a lot of speakers in near field on, off of these now. Now I have to bring anything else to this desk and say, well, how do they work in near field? How's the imaging Zeos? Imaging is how defined the sound placement can be between the two sources. On headphones, that means how accurately you hear this versus just middle right, middle left. And in speakers, usually you get a nice center image. And then it's sort of like you get some stuff here and then the speakers. 
I don't hear the speakers. I've always been told that's the thing. That's what you want. You want to not hear the speakers. You just want to hear sound and those are irrelevant. You don't even have to look at them. They don't, they don't exist. And that's what these do. Right now, it's just... <laughs> Mr. Phil Collins is like just here and, that doo -doo -doo, and there's just echoes and there's absolutely no restrictions to the sound. Now, we'll shuffle around my playlist and uh, I should probably go into detail on how I'm actually running all this because there's a lot of extra hardware that you don't take into consideration because you think, oh, Zeos has speakers. Nay, nay. I have networked smart speakers. And what does that the fuck mean? So, I'm using my normal review computer, which I usually use fiber optic output, which I am now. This fiber optic output, which is coming out of, by the way, a splitter, which is coming from the Origin G2, the little $110 uh, headphone DAC amp, but it happens to convert USB to fiber optic at 24 bit, uh, 96K, which is plenty fine for about everybody on earth. And fiber optic splitter is running here. I had to buy this box. Uh, the owner bought the speakers and this, but I wanted to get them set up in the app. People are telling me, oh, you got it set up with AES. AES is the way to go. If you don't know what AES is, I don't want to unplug it while that's running. I feel like bad things will happen. But AES is an XLR connector that is like digital. It's on some... <laughs> It's on some DAX. Now this is the new mass drop. 588? Do they even have the number on here? I just realized they didn't have the number. And you can see you got USB optical coaxial and AES3, which looks exactly identical to an XLR bus. Only difference is that instead of it just being like optical or coaxial where it sends things out randomly, this has a return signal that gives packet information. So it does not drop packets, which is anyone knows networking is good. So this box to convert from fiber optic to AES bus costs about a hundred bucks. And then uh, they were selling special AES compatible proper owned cables for it. So I had to go out and buy some short XLR cables and I bought like a five footer and a 10 footer. And how much do you think those cost? They should be cheap. That was like 60 fucking dollars for those cables, okay. So 110 and 60 and I'm keeping these for any future crazy speakers or anything else that uses AES. The owner wants to do that, he's gonna have to buy that stuff. But, so you get this, you get this, plug it into this speaker, XLR. So I, you can plug analog into these speakers, just straight up. I had the Army ADI-2 plugged into them, and it sounded really, really good. The problem with that is, these speakers have DSP correction, which is why the laptop is here. If you didn't notice, I have my main computer that's here and the laptop. The laptop is plugged into the Genelec. Let me get the actual name of this freaking thing. The GLM SAM loudspeaker management system. That's $500, by the way. This, this thing is $500. And on the back of it, you see USB, which is going to the laptop, a Cat5 cable or a Cat6 cable that's going to this speaker, a microphone plug, which is for the room correction, which we'll talk about in a second, and then this plug, which is for a volume control, which the owner didn't purchase, and I messaged him earlier today and said, purchase this, otherwise you're going to be dicking around with the computer all day. Because you see the volume on these speakers is no longer controllable through any like standard means. I can't limit. I could lower FUBAR. I could lower FUBAR and take away bit depth and that's bad. In all honesty, it's probably inaudibly different when you lower the digital volume, especially at a 24 bit level. But we're going for, remember that pure word? Like the kind of cocaine you sniff once and immediately go into a fit and die? That level of pure. So, Digital signal to digital signal to digital signal into this. Then this has an output of that digital in to go to that one. So that one becomes the slave off of this digital signal. Then you get the GLM box. Now this has the coax, the uh, Cat5 that goes into this speaker, and then it bounces out of this speaker and goes into that speaker. So that's the slave. They both get power. They both sit here. This box now controls the volume and the room corrections for those speakers. I found out very, 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 very badly that if this box is not plugged in, you no longer have volume control. And that makes shit real fucking loud because here's the deal. Um, Phil Collins playing right now. I'm trying to shoot 
That right there. That's 32 decibels below maximum. I'm able to, here's the app, here's a little GLM app. It's simple enough. You could set up different groups. You could hold over 21 speakers. You actually drag them into the layout you're using. Here's the controller, there's the microphone. And here's your volume control, a big volume slider, which I don't have a touch screen on, so I could do that. And when you don't have this hooked up, as far as I can tell, it just decides that you don't have any limitations and it's just gonna go to zero. And I nearly blew these $6,000 speakers up. So, be very, very careful. Now, you get mute, dim, uh, level presets, and bypass. The most important thing about these speakers, more important than how they're built, the aluminum, the power, all that shit is irrelevant because the room correction, the calibration, that what this microphone can do through this box and through its own tests makes all the difference in the world. And I'm probably gonna break down and get Dirac live for my living room because Dirac Live, if you don't know, is a correction software, just like this is doing, only built in for like the mini DSP. And it's like a $200 extra option, just software. I have to do nothing but unplug my thing, plug it in, download the patch, wait a, wait a day for it to install, and it's gonna be there. And because if I'm playing, let's play another song. Oh, and I bypass the calibration it loses almost all depth depth this this way I put on the calibration which if you don't know what room correction is let me explain that real quick because I again I'm I don't really talk about it on this channel much the speakers are sitting here in this fucking room which has got full of just random shapes and sizes and heights and doorways and everything and that means that sounds going to bounce out of it. This is not an anechoic chamber. When sound comes out of that speaker, by the time it gets to my face, it sounds different than it should in a perfect environment. It's bouncing off of this turntable and hitting me. It's getting absorbed into the rug. The space behind it is echoing the low end. All these fucked up things are happening to the sound. And uh, this microphone plugged into this box, it'll run a simple whoop test tone from, you know, zero hertz to 40,000 hertz. And the microphone listens. You put the microphone wherever my head is, it goes whoop, whoop. We might even experience it in the other room if I decide to show you. And then it says, wait, it knows exactly what the sound should sound like. This speaker itself internally generates that sound, right? There's basically enough hardware in these, comp in these speakers to call them base computers, the DSPs and the tone generators and everything else. So it makes the whoop, whoop. It listens to it on the microphone. It says, wait a second, there's too much low end. And this, this has a treble peak and then there's a decay issue and it just fucks with it. And the process literally is about 60 to 90 seconds. After it records, you could watch it, take the waveform and just start straightening it out for like a minute, a minute and a half until it figures out, okay, everything's fucked, let me fix it. Now there was an option, before I knew this, I did it in the living room, I had these in the living room, brought them in here, did it again, and then I found the option to separate the left and right, the left and right, so that it would, what it was doing, it was doing the average between the two and setting that up, and now I have it set to literally tune that one completely separate than this one, and oof, God. That's why I'm moving them back into my living room, because I think the added air around them is a benefit. A lot of people are gonna be shoving these into crowded studios, and that's a sad, sad fact because that's what people do. But if you have a giant carpeted room and you could put them seven feet from any wall. Okay, I should probably describe how they sound. I've heard things in music. Nine Inch Nails was playing, right? And I wasn't even sitting like where I am in the perfect spot. I was standing over there doing something else and these were just playing in the background. And I heard shit in that song out of the left channel only that I thought something was wrong. Like I heard his buzzing, like what's this buzzing? And I got close and I backed it up and it's it's part of the music. And I never heard it before. And I've gone through stacks and everything else and I'll hear things every now and then that it's like, well, oh, I've never heard that before. I've never heard that before. But that's headphones. Those are this far from your eardrums and very intimate and usually sometimes closed and you can get the volume right. I was standing on the other side of the fucking room 
and heard things that I'd never heard before. Not even paying attention. Just knowing the song and what should and shouldn't be there. And then they just, nah. Now, let me, let me tell you what. And I think it's almost a problem. Because if this is what you're getting in the studio, if this is what actual final masterings are happening on, no one's ever heard music before. I'm pre getting a little preachy, but I mean, people are just like, yeah, they're just really good channel acts. They're supposed to be real tra transparent, but transparent. But I live in a world of like, everyone's dream is to make speakers and everyone has their own uh, design principles and motivations. And if you're going for powered monitors, like I have fucking four of them up there right now. I've got the Mackie MR624s, which sound the best quiet. I've got the Emotiva Air Motive 6s, which are the loudest powered monitors I've ever used. I'm afraid to push these any louder because I don't own them and they're six grand. But I will blow those fuckers up for fun if I feel like it. Adam T5Vs because nothing beats them in powered monitors for that price. Just for enjoy enjoyment and depth and ooh. And then the fluids, which are as close as I get to these. Coax Ribbon really serious you know a speaker is good by the way like really like technically good when you start listening to music and good songs sound great and mediocre songs sound like absolute fucking turds because it really it, it it increases the dynamic range of quality because you know if you get just like a sound bar everything sounds like it's coming out of a sound bar and if you get good speakers really good speakers it sounds like, oh wow, it could even make bad music sound good from its tuning and what it's doing. But the Genelex here and those fluids, they take bad music and they show it to you. They strip off all its layers, all its clothing down to its naked britches and they shove it in your face and say, this is actually what you're listening to. And that's ruinous to some people. But when you get something good... This is FKA Twigs numbers, by the way. This is an experience. Because nothing sounds exaggerated. When a bass hit happens, I know, and these go down to 38 hertz, 37 hertz, 37 to 38,000 or something. When I hear the bass hit go boom, I know that's exactly what it's supposed to sound like. More so than even some of my more expensive headphones, my fucking, my trusted Ether C flows. I trust those. I trust those and I would, I think I'd trust these more. Cause I've he I hear, I'm in it. I'm in this whole fucking world of fire and blood. The God of tits and wine, let's go there. Sail there immediately. Everyone said I wasn't going to like these speakers. They said, oh, they're going to be too analytical for you. Well, that's the thing. If you hand me a, a good adventure novel, first of all, I don't read books because they make words brain go, and I don't do. But if you handed me like a good adventure novel, a short one with pretty pictures, I'd absolutely love that. Boobies, yay. And then you hand me a technical manual. I'm talking about a thick one with, with numbers and equations and shit. I can also enjoy that. See, that's the thing. I'm a scientist at heart. I'm a terrible scientist, but sound demos aren't scientific. I'm basically all about emotions and how things make me feel when I talk about headphones and speakers. But I can appreciate the science in something, like more than most people. And the, what these do to sound, to bring that from there to here, and all the corrections, and then the way that the power is handled, and this shape, and the rubber design, and just... Golf clap. There are so few songs, though, that I actually have. Like, I could switch through tracks. I mean, that's, that's an old recording, and I could just tell, and it's like, uh Why is my internet so slow? I could tell they used a cheap mic to record that. Next. 
Beatles. Oh God. It's actually not bad. A lot of very, very broad use of left and right in that. Like they haven't, they do like the doors where the doors would go like, let's play the piano only in the left channel. So this is, I'm hearing do, 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 then everything right and, do, do, and everything left. They're, they're missing all this space. Because back when they recorded the Beatles, what the fuck was sounds? Who was sitting perfectly in front of studio monitors to hear this shit? Everyone had towers on the floor next to their goddamn wine globes. I want one of those wine globes. I don't have the space for it. Point is with these speakers is they are absolutely what the music is. There's your bullet point. They're absolutely the music.com. Is that taken? It's taken now. I said it on this video. I could skip through sound songs all day. <laughs> Iggy and the Stooges. Raw Power. Who said that was um what's his name? The actor slash musician. He was he was bitching about them being the greatest. Everyone needs to hear that album, so I downloaded it. And it's very aggressive, and it's, honestly, if I were going to listen to it, I'd listen to it on these speakers before anything else, because it's like peeling off all the bullshit layers of music and just seeing the music, but that isn't always a good thing. You got to understand, there's a reason there's uh, $20 monoprice retros on my wall, because sometimes I just want the biggest, bassiest, widest soundstage, and they're light, and they're comfortable, and that's it. I don't want this all the time. This is ruinous. This is like fucking an 11. Just keep fucking that 11 all the time. Then everything else, every nine on the planet then becomes terrible to look at. So let's just, let's put that into perspective. I mean, not everyone will agree with me on that. But, but sometimes, sometimes it's okay to have a six. And you're a six, baby. Love you. I'm going to take these speakers off the stands now. We're going to look at them. Because you can't appreciate them. And I'm going to do the sound out in the living room with the headphone head assembled, I think. I haven't done it yet because it was hurting my brain. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to sit the headphone head where the microphone is and then do it. So let's pull a speaker down. One second. There's fucking sound there. Right there. Right there. Not there. It's nothing to do with the sound. It's there. This is Faithless, a kind of peace. Feet cat power. Yeah, it's a very enveloping sound. And if you put on the, if you run the DSP correction, you have to run the DSP correction. You actually, like, fixes everything to the point of like, they weren't worth six grand without running the, the corrections. And they're six grand now. Easy, easily. All right, I'm gonna close the laptop, which, remember I said the volume, so here's my volume control. If you get the plug, which is an extra $100. Where are you? If you buy this thing, where is it? There, 109, it's a plug. You just plug it into this, and then that controls the volumes, and you don't have to have a laptop hooked up. The speakers will remember the room correction, but they don't remember the volume. If I unplug this, bad things could happen, I think. I had a real bad experience and I don't want to repeat it. So I'm just going to just going to say you got to have either either the volume control button here or you got to limit it yourself. And I think you just might go to right to fucking maximum, which I've limited the maximum to 32. You see I can't drag it up. It says nope, 32 is maximum. So could you imagine from this volume and I'm going to talk normally. Let's get Ruby back up here. Hold on. I'm going to talk normally and I'm going to uh, play the next track and I'm going to not raise my voice at all and it's going to get probably very loud. Hold on. Here we go. And I'm um, skipping ahead, and there's that's this is as loud as it gets. Very fucking loud, right? Fucking very, very fucking loud, right? Now. You can't even hear what I'm saying. Possible getting your ass eaten out is great. So that's 32 decibel limitation. They can go another 32 decibels higher with the digital input, and I don't understand why it would need to get any louder than than that so the fact that you got to make sure you limit the volume based on your source and your uh, whatever because that's stupid okay so i'm gonna leave this playing at a decent clip mute that that's mogwai modern we're gonna move the laptop so i don't crush it because fucking 22 pounds is heavy <sighs> 
All right, baby, here we go. Anything that's gonna get caught, yanked, pulled. We're in the clear. It's an egg. Love is the egg. Anyway, the wonderful thing about this design, other than having this weird, look, I don't understand how this slot works. How do you work? How does that speaker make sound happen? Because I hear bass and mid-range, like that's gotta be doing some fun crossover mid-range. It can't just all be this. These are not just bass drivers that could be shot at the back. That's, that's it's vibrating the fascia. Do they have a DSP to vibrate the fascia at the right thing? The LEDs, by the way, if you don't like the green, by the way, green LED, you can shut that off. Let's lay this on its face because it's not gonna damage anything. Which is smart when you're doing anything professional audio, you don't wanna be able to damage it by like drawing around. That's why I love those iLoud micros. That's why you can just fucking fling them around. Fucking iLoud micros, great. Um, you can detach the mounts here and move them to either side also. Because since it's a coaxial, coaxial, that also works. In fact, maybe for the living room, I'm gonna do that. Maybe I'll get the screwdriver out, and the next time I turn on this video for the second half, oh, you'll see that. Now on the back here, port. That's just not a port that goes forward. That port goes in and down, and I've looked for diagrams of it, but there's very hard to find. Basically, it looks like it looks like a large intestine, all right? It goes down and in and up. It's like over here somewhere. So it's got a very long tuned port. Uh, brackets mounts here, 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 here. Then this bracket that is this interesting sliding X pattern that is just like a floppy rubber. Look, <laughs> floppy rubber, uh, floppy rubber. Um, this will slide backwards and forwards. And since the thing is an egg shaped, when you slide it forwards, the actual speaker tilts pointing down. When you slide it backwards, the speaker tilts up. Brilliant. Brilliant. Finished design. Made in Finland, by the way. I forgot to mention that fact. In fact, I released the unboxing on the Independence Day of Finland. Totally by accident. Everyone was like, oh my god, thanks for doing that. And I'm like, yeah, I did it. Because I'm amazing. I completely fucking didn't know. I don't know. I'm American. I don't know anything about Finland. All I know is Finland makes Genelax, and I want to go to Finland and listen to more Genelax. Because there's a bigger one than this. There's actually a smaller one and a bigger one. And I'm not just talking about bigger. I'm talking about fucking like 60% bigger than this. Here's your back panel. Here is your power, standard power plug. That's fantastic. I'd like to also point out for you people who believe in heavy duty power cords. Where's my baby? Is it around here? I thought I had one. Real quick. Cat litter box. No, can't find it. Can't find it. It's over. Um, if general, if actual power cords mattered in the sound reproduction field, Genelux would come with them, like good ones, and they just come with normal ones. So if you get a really high-end power cord because it's going to make your equipment sound better, you're a fucking moron, and I'm going to say that live on this video, and you could dislike all you want, because everyone that, you, that sees you dislike it, and they could see you, should punch you in the face. If you want pretty power cords, however, here's the thing, I found a $35 power, what the fuck is my giant power cord? Oh, there it is. Here. I spent $35 on this. It was on Amazon. I'll link it in the description. Gotta sell you people something. And look at it. Look at the monstrosity of this power cord. Right? It's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. And I'm okay with beautiful things. But it shouldn't be $700 and you shouldn't claim it's gonna remove the sibilance from all my bad, all the bad music will go away. No, no, no. If power cords mattered, Genelec would fucking include them. This is bullshit. It was cheap bullshit, which is why it's a gas. I only bought one. I might buy a second one and then try to plug in, like, maybe my computer. That's what I'll do. I'll plug my computer's power supply into it. Because look at this, who cares? All right? It's very pretty. They don't use them. You don't need to use them. Next up, here's your two Ethernet ports. And you can't plug this to the internet, it will not get Pornhub. What this connects to is the same on that. We're looking at one side. That side has two plugs. The input from the GLX. GLX. The input from the GLM, what I meant to say. The GLM controller box here plugs into that one there and there. It doesn't matter which one you plug into, just either one. And then you daisy chain it over to this. 
The AES plugs into there, and then here's the output for the AES, which plugs into this. And here is the analog input, which I had the RME in. And here's your power button, by the way. And there is your setting for input DBU. And it's currently set to negative six. They're both set to the lowest. So ne the lowest, they're set to the fucking lowest and it's still blowing up. Now here is an interesting array of diff switches. Just like your mom called you and all your brothers. And I have not touched a single one of them. You don't have to do it. If you don't have this box to do the actual room correction, you can do some basic corrections on this. I highly recommend if you're gonna spend six grand on speakers, spend $500 and get the actual right thing. You can do bass roll off, uh, desktop 160 hertz, bass tilt, treble tilt. That's what this whole array is for. This other side is more important for everyday use. LED disable. Again, you don't need to switch that switch if you have the software running on this because you could just disable the LED with a click. You get ISS. I don't know what the International Space Station has to do with anything, but it's there. Actually, I did look that up. It was on the manual. I just am totally blanking as to what that does. Uh, dip switches. Dip switches. I know someone's yelling it out. ISS. This switch activates or deactivates the ISS automatic power saving function. The default activation time variety is 60 minutes, but the time can be adjusted in GLM software. So, all right, that's power saving. Back to Ruby. Um, digital AB. That was the hard one. I had to read up on that one. Then you get level, negative 10, negative 20. I should actually probably click those on. I'll do that in the living room. I'm gonna move this to the living room and do like a five minute stint in there and then I'll do the sound in there. Because obviously if I have to kill it at 32, I should probably click both of those up. I don't know if both of them will combine to 30. And then stored, I don't know, stored something, something stored. What's stored mean? Stored. The stored switch selects between the application of the listed above controls in the monitor back panel and applying the settings of stored into the monitor using the GLM calibration software. Setting the stored switch to off position selects the five of the monitor controls and switch on. Internally stored GLM setting adjustment monitor. Setting, the internally stored and adjustments of the monitor have no effect. Ooh. Okay. That makes a whole hell of a lot more sense. I just figured something out in this video. So basically what that means is when I was complaining about you have to have this plugged in via USB or the shit explodes, set it up, put your limiter on in the software, flip that switch to stored, and then it will go off of that. Unless it just disables this, we'll find out, all right? See, so, you know, zero views is a very, very continuous thing, and I can't physically, mentally do it all without having the camera in my head and recording. And here's your power button. You press it to shut it off, press it to turn it on. Uh, factory reset settings, push button for 10 seconds. Beautiful, simple, nice, heavy as fuck. All right, I'm going to shut this off right now, and then we're going to move to the living room. Well, I'm going to move to the living room, and then I'm going to watch them when I, the time I got reincarnated as a slime on them and then I'll start recording again. From LEDs to CRTs, Wolfers, Twitters and Teletrees, and Ultra Night and Life of Ease. Okay, never heard some sounds in that song before. So now I've got the Gentil X here in the living room, which is where I had them originally when I first got them. I unpacked them, I said I'm up here because they tend to take up a lot of space on my desk. Oh God reviewing that next um and i like the sound of them better out here a little more space to breathe uh the room correction is also very 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 important out here turn it on and off uh, i've got them sideways now which does change the sound pattern it's the first time i'm running them sideways and i think because normally vertical you only get this much horizontal waveguide and now you're getting like double that i was finding that as I was moving in and out with my head like this, you get a little more change in the sound as you're doing that. Whereas in the vertical configuration, it tends to be a little bit more normal and natural. Could also be the fact that you're now running the two dwarfers in the horizontal orientation, like a center channel. So if you're not directly in front of it, then you're gonna hear this one before that one, where in vertical, that wouldn't be the case. So, set up as as follows, just real quick. Um, my fiber optic out of my home theater PC uh, usually goes down to the mini DSP that controls the amplifiers, the three crown amplifiers to run everything. Now that's going to an extension because I literally don't have a, USB, a fiber optic cable that went from there 
to there. So there's a, my three-way split powered splitter is there. Into the Hosa box. AES up into the left speaker, which I'm using as a master. And you can use either one. And you can see there's uh, XLR in, then XLR out. That XLR out comes all the way around and across. To this speaker, this speaker has one XLR, one Cat6, one power. And this has two, two, and then one power. Um, I've got them ports on the outside. You could obviously do ports on the inside if you're doing this configuration. It makes the light, the, the LED lights offset, so I shut them off. Really uh, enjoy listening to these speakers sometimes, man. Just, just like they're going to be missed in the Zeo's household. Here's the calibration mic. I basically took, this is an old broken speaker stand, and I went right there in between the pillows of the couch. Blue tack. That's exactly, well, wherever the hell I had my head set up to be. Played the whoop whoop. Done. Individualized bass management. Which you could add subwoofers and everything else to this and it'll just be insane. Chewbacca. This is like, I just wanted to show you out here what it takes to run these speakers. Other than the laptop. You could have, well, you're going to need still a source. And we could assume that I don't need the fiber optic coming from that computer. It could be running from my laptop. So just plug that wire in here somewhere. But you need the plugs for power for both. You need the power for the AES converter. You need to run the USB to the controller, which here's the thing that happened. Real quick story. So I set them up in here and I had them playing music and I was doing shit throughout the day. And I go to sit down, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna film this review now. And I lifted the laptop screen and it's like, getting ready to restart your computer and install updates. And I'm like, what? Because the volume limitation is software based. So I immediately lowered my volume playback on this. Um, we had Ruby in that room. We got Yang in this room, both wallpapers in the description. And it actually, when, I, when the computer restarted, none of the, vo the volume didn't shoot up to the sky, but since it restarted without me saving the volume like limit change, that disappeared. The LEDs came back on after the restart. And as soon as I loaded the application, the volume actually went down. So it remembered where the volume position was, but it didn't remember any of the settings. So if you save the settings, if you change settings on the uh, software, be sure to exit the software and then reopen it so that it saves. So the next time you restart your computer, it's saved. Now, we're gonna find out if the owner already ordered the knob, the control knob, the volume control knob, and he's got to figure out how this works because if you don't wanna have the thing plugged into your computer all the time, I mean, you should. If this is your source, this is your running, you can run it all the time. But if you wanted to just unplug that from the computer, I'm pretty sure you'd have to get a power plug and plug this into the wall so that that has power to feed what it knows to these things. They're very black, very black, and very pretty. I like the way they look. Some people just think, oh, they're so ugly. But they're, they're again, they're workhorses. They're here to do a job. Do I think you need them? Do I hear? All right, who needs these? Crazy audiophiles who only care about precision. I think everyone should hear a set. All right, I don't know if that's going to be possible. Everyone should hear a set. But the people who actually need are people who are going to get paid to make music. I was just listening to the Brave Little Toaster OST because Brave Little Toaster, best toaster. Um, and I could just hear, I heard every single thing that happened when they recorded that song. When someone was off tempo, when someone was off beat. And if it's a well-recorded song, you can enjoy it. So these are very enjoyable speakers if you enjoy tearing apart movies on the internet. Tear, just tearing down fucking people's creations. Um, if you just want to sit back and listen to music, you could do that for a whole lot cheaper. A whole lot cheaper. Or, or the same price, but you can get like dual SVS tower subs those tubular subs that shake the floor and any number of fucking tower speakers or bookshelf speakers. You can go a 3.2 music setup. You can do a surround $6,000 literally buys you plane tickets to any country you want to go to listen to their local music and stay in a hotel. So this is a, it's a big it's a chunk. Six grand is a chunk. 6,500 is a chunk. Plus another hundred for the thing is a chunk, but like sixty-six hundred dollars is just a chunk. So I'm going to end this review. I'm sorry if I was not um, 
detail. I didn't tell you about the phase. What about the phase delays? Yes. Who is this asshole who doesn't even know how to talk about speakers properly? I'm just some asshole who listens to speakers. Now, when someone offers me $6,000 speakers, I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to listen to him. I'm going to go, fuck. Fuck. In fact, I'm going to go, I'm going to say fuck again. I'm going to hit random. Game of Thrones. It's a Weird Al song, by the way. Don't love me any. You don't love me anymore. And it's just th where I'm sitting, and I'm sitting in the ideal spot right now. A little bit off the edge of my couch. This is sort of firing here. This is sort of firing here. And I've got all this space around it. There's no real first point reflections. I'm being very intimate with these speakers. This is like the ultimate place to set up speakers at a home. Away from every wall, get as close as they'll allow, and just play it. I did this with my fucking 590 towers. And they sound amazing. And he the fucking music. I'm in it. I'm inside of it. I mean, I'm in fucking just there. And at Weird Al, other than his last album, Straight Outta Linwood, everything was well recorded. Well, the older stuff had like eight dollar microphones recording it, and the the newest album. He went with the, he actually um, up the volume. Was it Mandatory Fun? Everybody shut up. Yeah, Mandatory Fun was his latest album. Look how, it's not quite brick walled, but it's, it's way up there compared to his older stuff. Like Poodle Hat. Actually, Poodle Hat's pretty fucking. <sighs> yeah, no, okay. The owner of these speakers is going to enjoy the fuck out of them. He's going to, he has to be this close though. This is it. This is the distance. You could turn them vertical, get the right height. I actually turning them sideways brings them down a little bit. They're usually like up here. And then I was really tilting them. Then you get this like upstage thing, which I know I talk about height dominance in one of my older videos. But being like right perfectly in line and everything is just working out. Yes, I could see spending $6,000 on these if you had the money. Fuck it. I mean, this is just one way to go. You're, if you spend $6,000 and you got the tower speak, the tower subs, big tower speakers, and your old room, it would still not sound as good as these when you're sitting right here. So that's my review. They are, they are worth it, all right? You're fucking happy? You're happy now? You're happy? I can't even imagine what the bigger ones are like. There's ones that are $37 or $800 each. But what the hell do those do? I don't want them. Please don't send them to me. Um, there will be a sound demo, a piss poor sound demo. Actually, I will be taking the Neumann microphones in the recording rig for the, for the headphone mount. I'm going to put it literally right here, right where I'm sitting. I'm going to somehow prop it up here. These speakers aren't going to move. They're going to say just like they are. I'm going to position it the best I can. I'll change the wallpaper. I'll put in a sound demo with, I don't even know what, 10 tracks. And we'll see how I, well I can. I'm either going to show off these speakers or the Neumann microphones or ruin both. Chewbacca will prance around prance. She's terrible at prancing. She doesn't even follow. You don't even follow direction anymore. You're fired. Anyway, this is done. I, I can't speak about them any longer. I'm pretty sure I just added another 10 minutes onto the 30 minutes in there. They deserve the time. The, the, the price tag alone deserves me bullshitting into a head cam for an hour it's probably gonna be about 43 minutes right now though 43 minutes right now like like now 4303 4304 no um both wallpapers available in the description links to these on sweetwater links to these on amazon links to all the other accessories including the um aes converter box that's staying with me he's buying his own uh everything else is getting pox back up if you insist on having this wallpaper as well, I've linked it in other reviews where I've used this laptop, but I mean, yeah, come on, yeah. So you'll get a thir three wallpapers. This is so long it has to have three wallpapers in the description. Um, I would like to thank everyone on my Patreon. There's a patron who loaned me these, and the Patreon will be uh, paying for the shipping and the insurance. And I've already looked it up. And it's gonna be a doozy. So about two hundred dollars later, these things should be back there, back to their owner. I appreciate you stopping by. If you'd like to see what I sell in the yard sale uh, once a month on the first of the tenth, 
I put out a video and I describe the items that I've bought and I'm just selling. If it's cheap headphones or, relative, or a company sends me like a headphone amp and I'm like, I don't have a need for this. Any of my old equipment I'm replacing. From the 1st to the 10th, I offer to anyone lowest bidder, well, no, no, highest bidder. This is not the space program. Highest bidder, but it's a blind silent auction, so you could bid $33.18 and win something. And if you save $20 and you paid $5 to get my Patreon and I'm paying shipping and I'm paying half shipping international, it's worth it. You also get to see these reviews a week or so early, maybe even more than that. So if there's a rush, all of a sudden, everyone of my patrons is like, oh God, I need to have $6,000 Genelec speakers. There'll be some available for you. And uh, you get to ask me questions. The $5 tier, um, or actually any tier, you could just message me on Patreon. But there is a $10 tier that gets you into a very almost exclusive Telegram chat with over 100 members now where they just bullshit with each other and they bullshit with me and I give, like I literally will video message them, show them what's going on. So if you want in the behind the scenes Telegram chat that you can ask me anything you want within reason or pasta within reason, that's $10 a month. I'll also send you pictures of Chewbacca whenever you ask. Right? That's worth $10. That's, hard. That's like one lunch. Anyway, thank you for stopping by. This has been Z Reviews. I don't know what I'm talking about. Signing off.